to ask yourself. I mean, Israel is in pretty dire straits. Iran is a thousand miles away. Israel does not have strategic bombers. It has fighters, fighter planes. Whether they can actually carry out the job of taking away the nuclear capabilities. Of course, if you believe that Iran is building these nuclear sites for to, medical isotopes, <laughs> I'm not going to get through to you. <laughs> Israel is in a very hard place. A lot of it its own doing. Arafat was in exile in Tunisia. The Jews brought him back, armed his terrorists with 40,000 weapons. <sighs> And that's because people, you know, it's the hopey changey thing. People wish, the wish is father to the thought. People want things to be better. They don't want to face the fact that there is evil in this world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> How is it that on our college campus, and I'm, I will tell you that um, on our college campus, you can't even get the information. We've given out a pamphlet called Muslim Hate Groups on Campuses. I tried to place an ad for that pamphlet in it's about 20 or 30 college papers. I actually got it into one at Ohio State. Of course, there was a big eruption. <laughs> Read the pamphlet. It's just facts. It's just facts. The Muslim Students Association Students for Justice in Palestine, these are Muslim Brotherhood groups, SDS and the politically brain dead campus left, are all out there making apologies, making apologies for Palestinian evil. You know, If you think that this is, uh, I, I'm, I'm always get accused, I'm, 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 it's an abstraction, you can't say all Palestinians. Where is the Palestinian peace now? Where is the Palestinian, what, standing up in the West Bank and Gaza, or Gaza, or for that matter in the United States, for the rights of Jews? There are hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of Jews who are standing up for the rights of Palestinians. It's all about intentions. It's all about the culture. And this, Palestine is a culture of hate. Oh, well, the reason that they have suicide bombers is they're desperate. The Israelis have tanks. Look. People have been oppressed in this world for thousands of years, horribly oppressed. But never, ever in the history of mankind has an oppressed people strapped bombs on its own children and sent them to blow themselves up with other children. And if then tells them that if they're lucky enough to be male, they're going to go to heaven and get 72 virgins, that is sick. Gaza is a death cult. And the death cult is created by, in Gaza by Hamas, a similar death cult in, in, in uh, the West Bank by the PLO. They lionize murderers, murderers of children, deliberate murderers of children. Well, that is somewhat redundant, since to murder somebody, you have to have the intent to do it. Who goes around trying to kill little, purposely targeting little children, except psychopaths? And they have institutionalized, whatever that is, psych, psychopathic behavior in Palestine, all of it. You can 
can see it on the web. It's really easy. You watch these people preaching. You see the little kids with their dressed up like suicide bombers. I actually saw a really good documentary on uh, HBO. It was called The Death in Gaza. It done by liberals. And they followed these kids who were 12 and 13 years old who were hanging around uh, Hamas and aspiring to be suicide bombers. And they wrote poems in their class about becoming a suicide bomber. A very, very sad picture. <coughs> One of the kids, uh, I, I forget the incident, but he was participating in some, something with Hamas, and he, he got hurt, but seriously. And then he's a little kid, all the, before he's boasting to be a suicide bomber, and then he's a 12-year-old in pain, screaming, bleeding all over this hospital table. They showed another, there was another sequence where they're playing Scissors Rock, the terrorist, Hamas terrorist, with the 12-year-old. With the and they're playing scissors, rock, paper. That. Paper, thank you. And then when the kid goes out or goes back home, the filmmaker interviews the terrorist and says, I see, you know, you use this kid as a runner and a lookout. Is that a little dangerous for a 12 year old? I mean, he could get killed. And the answer of the terrorist who was just playing with him oh, we have thousands of kids like that. They're just expendable. And we didn't use that last, but that was the implication. In the end of the film, I, the, the, the filmmaker actually gets killed. Nobody knows who killed him, but in the night he gets shot. But they, they have a sequence and they show the kids afterwards, after they come through the terrible experience of being in pain, and they've been hanging around with these filmmakers, and they ask them now what they want to be, and they say, filmmakers. <laughs> That's how sick it is. This is a whole society geared to bringing up its children to kill Jews. Now, why is the left? I mean, I've talked to, I, these are not stupid kids. They're very bright kids, actually, when you talk to uh, Why have they been sucked into this? I'm going, I'm, I'm just puzzling how I got myself at this, in this little corner here, because I don't want to give a whole, uh, I, I should come to the end of this talk, but I need to tell you how I see it. I grew up in the left. My parents were communists. I was one of the founders of the new left. Um, so I, I have a, a, a fairly educated insight into what goes on in the mind of a leftist and how it can link them uh, to the Palestinians, this Palestinian cause. There is no right in the Palestinian cause. The Palestinian cause would be right if it were directed against Hamas and Hezbollah and the PLO and the Arab states. Then, then you could support it. But it's directed against the Jews who are the victims of a 60-year war to exterminate them. That's basically what it is. And I should have pointed out that there is this link between the left because, as I say, the slogan of the PLO was push the Jews into the sea until, until the KGB stepped in. The KGB was uh, ran Arafat, no, or the KBG, I should put it, the lieutenant colonel, whatever they call themselves, who ran at Arafat. His name is uh, Pachepa, and he's written a whole book on this. The KGB said, you're never going to get anywhere by saying, push the Jews into the sea. You have to be for self-determination. You have to be the underdog. And so the PLO became the underdog seeking self-determination. Of course, if you understand the historical realities, you can see it's a lie. Because Jordan, as I say, is 60, 70 percent Palestinian, and it's ruled by someone else. 
But there's no movement to liberate Jordan. And then you put that together with, and they always find something, you know, Clinton and, and Ehud Barak, you know, gave, gave the store away in 2000. They gave what, whatever it was, 95%. The 95% is a hell of a lot of what you're demanding, considering you have been in an aggressive war against the person that, or the country or the nation that's offering you the 95%, which they reject. 